Welcome back to our study of the book of Isaiah, our lesson number six for the fall semester of 2024. And we're going to look at a common theme throughout the Old Testament that God put in place, and that is the judgment of nations. Uh, God has promised to judge nations. This all began back in Genesis chapter 12 with the forming or the stating that one day Israel would become a nation. And then the covenant was placed upon Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and the all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Then that covenant was shown to be an unconditional covenant, or ratified in Genesis 15, when God had Abraham prepare a sacrifice, and then God put Abraham to sleep, if you read the passage there talks about that uh, the Israel would go into uh, captivity for 400 years, and uh, when they came out, they would be a nation, and then God would bless that nation uh, if they followed him, did the right thing, Deuteronomy 28 and 29, the blessings and cursings. But also, uh, what would happen to nations that opposed Israel? And this is still in effect today. That's why, as a country, I think it's important that we support Israel. Uh, and I say that with reservation in that what I mean is we support them, we pray for them, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, we do what we can to help them. But it doesn't mean we have to agree with them on everything that they do. There are a lot of things that uh, people in Israel do that are contrary to the things of God, just like in this country. But as a nation, we have a great responsibility to support them. Historically speaking, the nations that have opposed Israel uh, have suffered greatly because of that. Uh, while Israel has been persecuted uh, more than any other nation, why? because it's God's chosen nation, and Satan wants nothing more than to destroy Israel. That's why uh, you have these organizations today that are opposing Israel that are ungodly organizations, that uh, the attack upon Israel last year is uh, still ongoing uh, for no reason whatsoever, nothing to gain for the Palestinian people but only to harm them because it's the so-called leadership that is trying to destroy, uh, maybe because of demonic possession, uh, greed, power, so many different things that lead people to do what they do. But we see historically in the Bible, there are many books of the Bible, many Old Testament books, and I won't list them now, but many Old Testament books that are centered around the judgment of nations and why those nations were judged. Uh, one of the first nations, and remember this is Isaiah chapter 14, uh, 13 and 14, and Babylon is not a world power at this time. They would not become a world power until uh, about 150 years or so later, 100 years later, I guess, uh, would be about the right timing, uh, after they defeated Assyria. Assyria was the powerful, most powerful nation at this time, Nineveh, the capital of it. And then Babylon would come in in uh, about 606 B.C., 607 B.C., and defeat Assyria. Uh, and then God would use them Babylon to take Israel into captivity, and then God would judge them. Now, don't get me wrong, God did not set them up for failure. God allowed them to be the ones to defeat Judah, uh, to punish Judah, but Babylon <laughs> became excessive violent in their takeover of Judah, and that's why God eventually would uh, punish them with the Medes and the Persians. Uh, and so, first of all, in Isaiah 13, 
uh, at Babylon was to be destroyed by the Medes. Of course, we, we know that happened. Um, the armies would be chased back to their own land as a wild dog would pursue a fr uh, frightened deer. Uh, the soldiers would be tortured, their children murdered, and their wives raped. Now, again, when God prophesies things and tells us things that's going to happen and that it comes to pass, it does not mean that God calls these things to happen. God did not intend for the children to be murdered, the soldiers tortured, or the women raped. God is just telling us that this is what's going to happen. Uh, knowing something is going to happen does not mean causing it to happen. God did know that they would be defeated, but the Medes and Persians were far crueler than God wanted them to be, but God did give them free will. Isaiah, after hearing the news of Babylon's punishment, uh, became sick at his stomach over this. I mean, he realized the reality of God's Word. I mean, I don't know if we really think about that sometimes. We, we know of God's Word, what God's Word has said. It's like the tribulation period and the events that take place in the tribulation period. Uh, if we would really comprehend what God is saying there, I mean, we have a head knowledge of it, but if we had a heart knowledge of it, it would make us sick to our stomach to see all the death that's going to take place, all the horrendous activities that's going to take place. Uh, it's sad. And Isaiah got it. He understood exactly what was going to take place. Isaiah, in chapter 21, also described the watchman as he brings word that the city has fallen. So, God here, prophecy in Isaiah filled, fulfilled over a hundred years later uh, was very, very real to Isaiah. Number five, Babylon was to become a desolate land. Uh, this hasn't totally taken place yet because Persia occupied that territory and uh, even to this day, Persia uh, until the early 20th century, uh, it was Persia, now Iraq and Iran. Uh, but verse six or number six on our list here, Babylon was never to be rebuilt. And we see fulfillment of this is in the tribulation period, when Babylon will be rebuilt on the Euphrates, but not in the same manner as it was in the Old Testament, but you have religious Babylon, the harlot, uh, the economical Babylon that uh, controls the world during the tribulation period of time. And Babylon will cease to exist as God predicted, God prophesied. And then Assyria, that would be, uh, take, their fall would come before uh, Babylon's, obviously, because Babylon would be the one to destroy them. But God had determined to crush the Syrian army on the mountains of Israel. And that's where Assyria was. If you remember, Assyria first took over the northern kingdom in 721 B.C. Uh, and then they lasted until 607 B.C., somewhere around that time period, uh, when Nebuchadnezzar uh, would take over Babylon after the death of his father. And then this would be done to remove the awful Assyrian yoke from his people. Assyria, remember, did conquer the northern kingdom and was very vicious in that attack. About 10% of the people survived that attack. So God would punish them for the evils against Israel. And Isaiah 14, 25 says that I'll break the Assyrian in my land on my mountains tread him underfoot then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden shall depart off their shoulders. God promised and fulfilled his promise. Then Philistia. Uh, Philistia is there on the Mediterranean uh, uh, border, uh, Gaza, uh, Ashkelon, Ekron, uh, five different cities of Philistia. Um, 
In fact, the word Philistia in, three times in the King James is rendered as Palestine or Palestina. Uh, Palestine never was all of Israel. It was only Philistia. And so, but God warned uh, Philistia not to rejoice over the death of King Ahaz, uh, who had smote them when he was alive, and said his son Hezekiah would come in, he'd be more demanding on them. And then finally Philistia was to suffer total doom, destruction, when Sargon became the king of Assyria. So, fulfilled prophecy here. Uh, Philistia had an opportunity to know God because of their proximity to the people of God. They chose to reject him, and by rejecting him, it brought the cursings of the Bible upon them. Isaiah 14, 29, Rejoice not thou whole Palestina, there is Philistia, Palestine, uh, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a firing, flying serpent. So they will have a swift and cruel defeat. Next country to suffer would be Moab. And, uh, Moab was on the uh, east side of the Jordan, uh, more southern of, uh, part of Israel as far as their proximity to the land, the Moabites. Remember the Moabites and the Ammonites were the descendants of uh, Lot and his uh, daughters who had got him drunk and raped him and they became the two nations. Moab was to be punished by God with his chief cities destroyed in one night. Um, and then the whole land would be filled with weeping from one end to another. So Moab would be completely wiped out because, again, of their proximity to Israel gained them knowledge of the ways of God and then they rejected those ways. So they suffered greatly because of that. Isaiah 15, 1 says, The burden of Moab, because in the night hour of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence, because the night cur of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. So Ar and Kerr, two chief cities, were destroyed, as it says, and brought to silence. In 15.8 of Isaiah, For the cry has gone round about the borders of Moab, the howling thereof unto Eglium, and the howling thereof unto Berylim. Uh, so, again, this other cities, chief cities of Moab, destroyed. Number three, in regards to Moab, it says lions would come in and hunt down the survivors of the people. So there'd be no escape. You might escape the, the battles, but then you have no place to hide. Then Moab's refugees were invited by God to avail themselves of his mercies. They were enjoined to pay tribute to Israel according to their past arrangement. So those who did escape had to be under servanthood to Israel. We know Moab did exist during the days of Jesus. Uh, Herod was a Moabite, partially Moabite. For the waters of Diamond shall be full of blood, for I'll bring more upon Diamond, lions upon him that escapes of Moab, and upon the remnant of the land. Then, in 2 Kings 3, uh, 5 through 9, uh, it says, But it came to pass, when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. And King Jehoram went out of Samaria at the same time and numbered all Israel. I'm talking about the northern king here. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab hath rebelled against me. 
Will thou go with me against the Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. He said, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. Now, interesting enough, there Jehoshaphat is considered one of the good kings of Judah. And when asked by the king of Israel, the northern wicked king, if he would help in battle, Jehoshaphat says, well, we're of the same people. And that is absolutely true. They were of the same people. Uh, he says, I am as thou art my people, as thy people, and my horse thy horses. So we're all one, one people. Uh, and technically, yes, that's true. But the problem is he makes an ungodly alliance with the northern kingdom. And because of that, Judah suffers as well. Uh, verse 8, uh, St. Kings 3, 8. And he said, which way shall we go up? And he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. Isaiah 16, 1 says, Send ye the land to the ruler of the land from Selah, to the wilderness and to the mountain of the daughter of Zion. Moab has suffered greatly. goes on to say, uh, pride kept Moab from succeeding in any way. Uh, number six, Isaiah wept because of God's judgment upon this stubborn pride. I mean, Isaiah was very compassionate against his enemies. He, he didn't want to see them wiped out. He wanted to see them to repent. Number seven, judgment was officially set to fall within three years during that time, Assyria invaded Moab. Isaiah 16, 6, we've heard of the pride of Moab. He's very proud, even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath. His lies shall not be so. so pride, wouldn't that, remember it's the downfall of Satan and the downfall of most people. Pride, arrogance. Have all these TV preachers you hear about these mega church preachers who have fallen by the wayside, or, or, sadly, not fallen. Uh, they sin, they commit adultery, uh, many other things, and they stay in the pulpit. And the church supports them uh, because of their personality, and they continue to preach with a, a wicked lifestyle, and. Nobody seems to mind. Uh, I mean, I, just the, the news now of what's going on uh, in our world today with uh, the rapper and his spiritual advisor. I'm going to go into names right now, but a very famous situation uh, where a rapper's in prison right now who, for sex trafficking and prostitution and mur pro probably murder, many other things. And his so-called spiritual advisor who attended uh, the parties that this rapper was giving. And this, his spiritual advisor is a, a well-renowned TV preacher uh, that w should fall by the wayside if he, if he truly is involved in all these things. And, and I'm not 100% sure that he's involved, but uh, why would you associate yourself why would you attend some of these things that uh, have been well documented of the horrible sins that have been going on? Uh, if you went there to witness to him, he was in the wrong place because he obviously wasn't effective there. But that's what's allowed today in our churches today, and it should not be. And you, No wonder that God is judging uh, America and the world today because of their sin and their acceptance of sin. Isaiah 16, says, Wherefore my bowels shall sound like a harp for Moab, and mine inward parts for Kiharesh. So, again, the sadness. How Isaiah felt about the destruction of Moab. Because they are people. We should be concerned of people, even when they're wrong. 
Isaiah 16, 14 for number 17. The judgment was officially set to fall. God said, But now the Lord has spoken, saying, Within three years, as the years of a hireling, and the glory of Moab shall be contemned with all that great multitude, and the remnant shall be very small and feeble. So those that do survive will be very few, will be powerless, become basically servants to Israel. I have to pay uh, taxes to them. Then Damascus, uh, Lebanon, up there on the Mediterranean, the northern part of the Mediterranean along the border of Israel. Uh, in 1703, we see Ephraim uh, mentioned. Ephraim, remember, is a, the northern kingdom. Uh, oftentimes, and you have to look at context. When you see the name Ephraim or uh, Samaria uh, or even Judah, you need to make sure the proper context of what it's talking about. Sometimes Judah is a person, sometimes Judah is a tribe, sometimes Judah is the nation, uh, the southern kingdom. Whereas Ephraim was a person, Ephraim, Ephraim was a tribe, and then Ephraim was the capital of the northern kingdom, and therefore many times the northern kingdom was uh, mentioned as Ephraim. It says another title, uh, uh, excuse me, verse 3, The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim, from the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. So, the, linking the king, that kingdom with the divine judgment. Uh, so, partners in crime meant partners in punishment. When the northern kingdom joins up with the enemy, both are punished. And what happened? Well, not too much longer. Both the allies were later besieged by Tiglath-Pileser, the king of Assyria, and then finally deported under Shalmaneser. It says, In the days of Pekah, one of the last kings of the north, not the last, but one of the last, Hoshea being the last, but in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Aijan, and Abel Beth Maacha, uh, yeah, Abel Beth Maacha, and Genoa, and Kadesh, and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, and all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. So, again, they joined up with the enemy for help. The northern kingdom did, thinking that the enemy would. Uh, Saved them in time of trouble, and it obviously didn't work. God judged not only them, but judged the enemy that joined up with them as well. The enemy in this case being Damascus, Syria. Then Ethiopia. Which Ethiopia over in Africa, uh, below Egypt, uh, not too awful far away from Israel, from Judah. It says, nation marched against Israel, but cut off by God himself. And they wouldn't even make it. Their army would be left dead on the field. Not even be able to bury their dead. Now Isaiah 18, 5 and 6, it says, for before the harvest, when the bud is perfect, and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, you shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches that shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall summer upon them and the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. So total destruction of this army by, by the hand of God. It does tell us so. Now is 18.7 And that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts, of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot, whose lands or rivers have spoiled, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. So 
in the millennial kingdom, Ethiopia will exist and bring gifts to the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem during the holy days. And so God has chosen for allow Ethiopia to make it into the millennial kingdom. Egypt. Uh, Egypt, once the mightiest nation in all the earth because of Joseph, who God allowed to be sent in there. Remember, uh, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. And Joseph recognized the fact that his brothers meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. No other nation more so prominent in, in the Bible is Egypt. I mean, how many times over and over and over again do we talk about the nation of Egypt? First mentioned when Abraham visited there in Genesis chapter 12. And of course, later... Joseph would live and die there in Genesis 39 through 50. It was there that Israel even became a nation. It was 120 goes into captivity and into their, uh, not into captivity, goes into Egypt, later become captive because the Egyptians saw that the non Egyptians became a very powerful people and began to be afraid of them and decided that uh, if we allow them to have power, so it was kind of a political revival that went on in Egypt where they kicked out all the foreign uh, powers of authority and started putting the people into subjection, afraid that they would rise up and take over Egypt, and Israel being one of those. and so. But God had a purpose there, and Israel became a, a great number of people, estimated somewhere around anywhere from two to three million uh, Israelites who left with Moses on the wilderness journey. Egypt was to be severely punished because of her idolatry. Uh, remember the, the judgment upon Egypt, on Pharaoh. Each judgment was an attack upon just one of the Egyptian gods. There were ten there, and there was several more Egyptian gods that they worshipped. Uh, hundreds, if not even more than that, the uh, pagan gods, idolatry. Uh, they had the opportunity to come to God through, through Joseph. When the Pharaoh that knew Joseph was alive, uh, Joseph was well honored. But when that Pharaoh died, it says the new Pharaoh knew not Joseph, forgot what God's people had done for the nation of Egypt and turned their back on them, and that's why they suffered like they did. God's judgment on them. Uh, later on, Sargon II of Assyria uh, says Egypt would be given over to a cruel, cruel ruler. This happened during the same time as the northern kingdom of Israel. Uh, later on, they would be sent into the Babylonian captivity. There was a civil war. Egypt would fight against uh, Egyptian would fight against Egyptian, and we see that happening happened over and over. The waters polluted. The channels along the Nile River would be filled and fouled with rotten reeds. The reeds by the brook would wither away. When people have no water. Supply coming in, the plants suffer, the food suffer, uh, famine sets in. Why? Well, God judged them because of their idolatry. And we'll see later on, uh, sends them into a 40 year captivity uh, by the Babylonians. Next week we'll continue with these judgment of nations that God mentions here in the book of Isaiah.